back. Oh my god, I'm so excited to see you guys. Just kidding. Anyway, Mr. Key's back. Oh my gosh, I'm on purple. This, by the way, we just did, I already finished 1 through 12. So this video will be for 13 through 24. 13 through 24. So yes, we are doing part 1. Part 1, problems 13 through 24 of the June 2014 exam. Man, it literally looks messy. So you get rid of all that stuff. Oh, there. Look how neat that is. Okay, and we're going to be doing problems 13 through 24. Before I continue, I'm changing sponsors. Even though I really don't have a sponsor, I'm changing sponsors because, quite frankly, I've been filling my cups up with Dunkin' Donuts coffee anyway. I haven't even been using Burger's coffee, so... <laughs> and Burger's isn't getting me any money. Dunkin' Donuts isn't going to give me any money either, but I might as well drink good coffee. Mm, well, hold on. And besides, I made a few mistakes on my last video, and I'm going to blame the Brugger's Cup. I don't know why, but I'm going to blame, 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 blame the Brugger's Cup. Okay, here we go. We're going to start with problem number 13. So for those of you that did not hear my lecture before, these, are, these videos are for you and to help you. Now, when I say help you, I'm not saying help you get your homework done. I'm saying help you as in maybe you should have done the problems already. If you're here and you already tried the problems and you're just checking your answers or you want to see how you did, hey, welcome to the jungle, baby. Here we are. But if you're here just to cheat, sorry, kids, total mistake, total, not going to work, going to be mad at you. So don't, you're not going to get any better. You're not going to pass the test if you're here to cheat. So if you're here to look at my, to check out how I did the problems or maybe to get a couple of ideas on how to do the problems, welcome. 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 I'll try not to annoy you, but it probably won't happen. All right, so uh, problem 13. The most important question word in this problem is this word, word right here. Rational number. A rational number, if you go blah, 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 the mathematic definitions, it can be written as a fraction, as a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. Blah. Okay, when you type this into your calculator, the square root of 2, you get a whole bunch of stuff. 1.414, blah, 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 blah. Ah. If you type this one in your calculator, you get a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Three square roots of three, uh, you know, five, blah, 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 blah. but clearly this is four and clearly this is three. And if I want a rational number, I don't want all those crazy decimals. Don't like crazy decimals. They're crazy. So I got to figure out which one's going to give me something. So I'm going to try to find one that just uses N and P. If I have to, I'll go to these, but it'll be a lot trickier. So N and P. Oh, look at this right here. N plus P. The answer is seven. Boom. Done. Problem's over with bodied. I don't even know what that means. Somebody said it one day. It sounded cool. It's not really. All right. Problem 14. Which equation has the same solution? So here's an equation. Here's a test to see. They want you to try to think about whether or not how to use the what's called the elimination method, which you're trying to eliminate one of the variables. So the easiest way to eliminate one of the variables is to make this here a 2. Now, in order to make that a 2, I would have to take this entire second equation and multiply it by 2. Okay, then it would become 6x minus 2y equals 8. Problem 2. Next problem's done. Sorry, right, got some hiccups. The table below shows the function f. So these are the domain. This is the range or the y values. So who? So I got to try to figure out which one of these functions of the, geez, wait, hold on. All right, I hope I get rid of those hiccups. Man, those are crazy. All right, so anyway, let's try, well, let's try one. Um, remember, these are going to go in for x, so this would be 3 cubed or 27, nope. This would be 3 times 3 is 9. Hey, that one's good. So let's try, let's just try another random one. 3 times 7 is 21, not 2, 229. Uh, that one looks complicated. Let's just go to this one. Uh, 3, uh, 2 times 3 plus 3, that's 9, that works. And then 2 times 7 plus 3, that's, uh, no, not even close. It's this one. And what it is, is 2 cubed is 8, plus 1 is 9. And then 2 to the 7th power is 128, 
plus one is 129. So that's the right answer. There she is. All her glory. So John has, John has, let's get some important stuff. Four more nickels than dimes. So if I'm doing this problem, I'm going to say, what, what are we letting x equal? x equals the number of dimes. So x equals number of dimes. Then if he's got four more nickels, then if I had x and I wanted four more nickels, that would be x plus four equals the number of nickels. I always spell nickels wrong. Okay, so that's not even an equation. It probably should be just to kind of trick you. Now, the hard part about this, and the hard part about money questions is you have to multiply by how much a dime is worth. And a dime is worth 0 0.10 or just 0 0.1. And a nickel is worth 0 0.05, but you've got to remember to multiply this whole thing by 0 0.05. So if I put all of this together, I get the right equation, and that would be... Number two, the winner. Because there's the 0.01x, there's the 0.05x plus four. Yay, finished. Number nine, page nine. I hate that I have to do this. So this question on the Regents exam, and I remember this vividly, was a very, 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 very missed question. Um, because they tricked you. I'm not going to lie, they just did. So you're looking for the one that has the highest rate of change. Which one has the, their average speed was the greatest. We're looking for the average speed of the greatest. We're looking for the highest rate of change. So, the, you know, we're going along, that's kind of small, that's kind of big. And you know, oh, look at this. Look, this looks pretty steep. Looks like from six to eight. So if you just go by feeling, oh, God, that feels good. He's not going to get it. Because what happens is I have 350. The change was 350 to 230. So that if I take 350 and I subtract the off 230, so the change in the y's, the y value change was 120, and the x value change, which was 8 minus 6, is 2. So this would be 60 miles per hour, which is okay. And if I look at all the rest of them, yeah, the change here is 40 over 2. That'd be 20 miles per hour. The change here would be 50 over 2. That would be 25 miles per hour. So, so clearly 60 seems like the highest, except until you get to here. And they went from 1 to 2. All the rest go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And this one went from 1 to 2. And if you look at it, it goes from 110 to 40. So 110, why do I keep forgetting that last zero? Minus 40 is 70 over 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So this is 70 over 1. So the clearest speed change was in the first hour. So from the first to the second hour, there it is. They just tricked you because all the other ones were going up by 2s, and this one they decided to go up by 1s. Crazy. Christopher looked at his quiz shown below for the first and second semesters. We're talking about interquartile range. Now, IQR, interquartile range, you'll remember, is Q3, quartile 3, minus quartile 2. 1. Sorry. Brain cramp there for a second. Quartile 2 is the median. Uh, so we got to find the median. we got to find the means. we got to find, oh, my gosh. So we're going to find the five score, five number summary for each one of these. So I'm going to do this in my calculator, because just to give you another opportunity to show you how to use this calculator. So in this first one, we're going to go, I'm going to need to move slightly. Oh, come on. Well, all right. So 78.91. So we'll call this X. Seventy-eight. 91, 88, 83, 88, 83, and 94. Now, for this calculation, you get all the way to the top here. We'll go menu, stats, stat calculations, and we're going to do just one variable statistics. That's it. Boom, done. And we'll put our information 
called it X. Boom, boom, boom. Click OK. And we get our five number summary. So the min is 78. So let me write these out. 78, 80.5. 78, 80.5. 88, 92.5, 88, 92.5, and 94. Now, the other thing I think on this was X bar, which is the mean. We gotta figure out what the mean is, and I think that's given up here. Oops. I don't know what just happened. Oh, I went way down. Somehow I went way down. All right, let's just do this. So the X bar is 86.8. That's the average, 86.8. All right, now we're going to the next one. So we'll just get a new home back in. I'm going to do these. I'll call this Y just to get a different variable. Because otherwise, if I called it X, it would just fill it up with all the other X. 91, 96, 91, 96, 80, 77, 80, 77. 88, 85, uh, and 92. So it should be seven numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, we'll just do the same thing with this one. Menu, stats, stat calculations, one variable statistics, one list. We called it, this time we called it Y. Notice X is still in there, so you gotta use Y. And in this case, the X bar was 87 and we'll get our five number summary 77 80 77 80 88 77 80 88 92 and 96 92 96 all right so those are my five number summaries i can create a um box and whisker plot from those five number summaries everything i want so let's see, the inner quartile range for semester one is greater than semester two. Semester one, my inner quartile range is 12. For semester two, it's 12. Those are the same. Nope. The median score for one is greater than the median score for two. 80. Let me get to a different color. 88. 88. Nope. The mean score for two is greater than the mean score for one. 87 is bigger than 86. Hey, it looks like we found our winner. Uh, the third quartile score for semester two is greater than the third quartile score for semester one. Third quartile two is not bigger, it's less. There we go, kids. Done. Next problem. So it says here, which point could be used to find f of 2? Now remember, f of 2 really says the y value when x equals 2. Well, which one of these functions has x, an x value of 2? And that would just be a, choice 1. The sunflower is three inches tall at week zero and grows two inches per week. Which function shows can be used? All right, so if it's three inches tall at week zero, if I plug in a zero here, I get three. So that one works. And then if I plug in a one, I get two more. So this is clearly the linear model that they're talking about. And so I know it's got to be one. So it can't be this one and it can't be this one. But can it be three it even have, or two? So let's plug in a zero for this one, f of zero. I should get out three, because week zero, it starts at three. So this is two times zero plus three times zero minus one. This, this is zero, and this is negative three. Oh, that's not gonna work. Boom, that doesn't work. So there's my answer. I don't even have to go into the fact that this is written a little bit recursively and it's saying that f of 0 is equal to 3. That's what this end thing says. And then f of 1, which is really n minus, you know, n minus 1 is equal to f of n. This is n equal to 1. 
is equal to f of 1 minus 1, which is this, 0, plus 2. And we're just adding the previous one on. And yes, this recursive function works. All right, moving on. Recursive is very difficult for kids your age to understand. I get it. So a cell phone company charges 60 bucks a month for one gig of data. So 60 bucks a month. I don't think the one gig of data comes into play, but there it is. And five cents per megabyte. D is the number of additional megabytes. So D has to go with the 0 0.05 because D is the number. And C represents the total charges. So if you're... So you're going to start with 60 bucks a month, and you guys have been long enough. You're going to just keep adding and adding and adding. So if I go over by one more gig, one meg, I go add a nickel. If I go over by two nickels, two gigs, I add a nickel. Three gigs, I add another nickel. So we're clearly not subtracting. That doesn't even make any sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with $60, and we're going to add however many of these I have, which is clearly this answer, not this one. This one doesn't make any sense. All right, done. All right, let's do this problem. Um, I want to solve for R, which means I need to get R all by itself. So what I always tell my students, I say, hey, students, math is fun and cool and awesome. <laughs> Then they tune off and they don't listen to me anymore. Uh, I, I tell my kids, get rid of fractions first. And the way you get rid of fractions is to multiply by the denominator. I'm going to just multiply by the denominator. And if I, but if I multiply this side by 3, i got to come over here and multiply this side by 3. Now, by doing that, I get 3v equals this 3 and this 3, because I'm multiplying by 3, cancel. And I end up with 1, I don't need the 1, pi r squared H. Now I'm almost done. Not quite. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of, I still want to get this R by itself. So I want to get rid of the pi and the H. I'm going to divide by pi and H. Divide by pi and H. Gone, gone. Now how many of the answers have 3V over pi H? Nope, nope, and nope. I'm done. There it is. But just so you know, that last step, since I have r squared is equal to 3v over pi over h, that last step uh, is to take the square root. That's it. That's it. That's all you want. All right, here we go. Moving on. Ooh, what is this? What is this? What is this craziness? Assuming the pattern continues, which formula a sub n will shed the numbers on? Well, okay, so this is 1. So when I plug in n equals 1, I should get out 12 squared. I think there's 12, right? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I should get out 12 shaded squares. So let's see. 1, 4 times 1. Oh, that's over 12. 4 times 1, that's not 12. 4 times 1, that's 12. That's not going to be that. It looks like this is the winner. I mean, that's it? Seriously? Let's plug in 2. N equals 2. Let's see if it works. Now, let's give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So just so you know, they're just adding on 4 additional squares on the outside. And this one to the one previous. So this one's going to give me n equals 16. So when I plug in a 2, I should get 10, 16. And if I plug in a 2, that 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. Yes, that's the winner. Yay! That's it. That's it. That's all you wrote. That's number 24. That's problem number 24. The multiple choice are over. How did you do? Remember, you're trying to get less than 5 wrong. If you can get less than 5 wrong, you're doing pretty good. And don't forget, Dunkin' Donuts coffee sometimes helps. But only if you're an adult. If you're young, it stunts your growth or some crap like that. Okay, see ya. Catch you on the flip side. Hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. I, the more subscribers I have, the more easy it is for me to make videos and for me to do things on YouTube. Goodbye, kids.